Hello everyone, today we have the pleasure to meet three cosmologists at the University of Geneva who recently did a project to test the laws of gravity at large distances at the scale of the universe. Nice to meet you! Hello everyone, my name is Camille, I am a professor in physics at the University of Geneva and I am a cosmologist. My name is Veva and I am a PhD student working under the supervision of Camille. And I am Nastasia, a postdoctoral researcher working in the group of Camille. I have so many questions for you. First of all, why do we want to test the laws of gravity? Why is that even important? Well, gravity is everywhere around us. The laws of gravity tell us how massive objects attract each other. So, for example, how you are attracted by the center of the Earth, and also, on the other hand, how the Earth attracts you. I've heard about this guy named Newton who discovered the law of gravity. Indeed, this guy called Newton discovered that there is an attractive force between massive objects that decreases with the distance between the two objects and increases with the product of their masses. But then Einstein came with his fabulous theory of general relativity and actually taught us that gravity is not a force, but rather a distortion of space-time. We can imagine this by picturing the universe as an immense tablecloth whose fabric is distorted in the presence of massive objects. So this creates what we physicists call a potential well. And then if we put another massive object close to the distortion, it will feel the distortion and inevitably fall inside it. So this is gravity. And actually, cosmologists have tested general relativity with incredible precision. And this theory so far has never failed. Okay, but then why do you still want to test gravity further? Well, the thing is that there is one big mystery in the universe that we still do not understand. And this is the fact that the universe is not only expanding, but this expansion is actually getting faster and faster. Wait, what? What does it mean that the universe expands? It means that the distance between all our galaxies gets larger and larger. This is the fact that we know very well from observations. However, we expected that this expansion would slow down with time. Similarly, when you throw an apple into the air, it moves away from you. But the speed of this movement slows down. This is because the gravity of the Earth counteracts this movement. And this does not happen in the case of the expansion of the universe? Actually not. In 1998, two groups of astrophysicists observed exactly the opposite, that the expansion of the universe is accelerating as a function of time. So if we go back to the apple, this is the same as saying that the apple would go away from us faster and faster as it goes up in the air. That seems totally crazy. And how do you cosmologists explain why the universe behaves in such a strange way? Actually, we don't know. So, one possibility could be that there is, in our universe, a new form of energy that we call dark energy that would have the property to make the space between galaxies increase faster and faster as a function of time. And another possibility could actually be that general relativity is wrong on very large scale, at the scale of the universe, and that the true theory of gravity would be such that it would make the expansion of the universe accelerates as a function of time. So then, how can you determine which of these scenarios is true? Well, that's actually why we need to test gravity. And it's not sufficient to do it on the scale of the Earth, not even of the solar system, nor of our galaxy. We need to go beyond. We need to go on the scale of galaxies and galaxy clusters, on cosmological scales, because it is there that general relativity may fail. How can you do that? So as we said before, general relativity tells us that massive objects distort the fabric of space-time. And the theory is actually able to give a theoretical prediction for the depth of the resulting gravitational potential. Then, if we want to test the theory, it means that we can compare this theoretical prediction with observations. And if the observed depth is deeper or shallower than the value predicted by general relativity, then it means that Einstein was wrong. And cosmologists have actually performed this test. They have looked at the distribution of galaxies in the sky, and starting from there, they have inferred how deep the gravitational potentials that the galaxies generate are. And they have compared with the theoretical prediction, and guess what? They have exactly recovered the value predicted by general relativity. I see. 
This type of measurement sounds quite difficult to achieve in practice. Indeed, even with the best telescopes that we currently have, it is incredibly difficult to conclude anything by looking at faraway galaxies. So right now, that value that we have from general relativity is perfectly in agreement with our measurements. But these measurements are not very precise. So there are also many other theories, called modified theories of gravity, that are also in agreement with the measurements. Right now, it is simply not possible to really conclude anything about the law of gravity at the scale of our universe. But this will change in the upcoming years, since better data will be collected. Okay, so then we just need to wait and we can meet again in a few years to see what results the new data give. Well, it is actually not that simple. Indeed, in our study, the three of us have shown that by simply waiting we will not solve our problem. Even with incredibly precise data, we would not be able to answer the question if general relativity is valid by simply doing what we did so far. The reason for that is that we are actually not able to directly see the depth of the potential. What we can measure is the impact of the potentials of the formation and the evolution of galaxies. So imagine the potentials are deeper than predicted by general relativity. In this case, the galaxies will fall into the potentials more efficiently and thus we will observe more clusters than in the case of general relativity. Ok, so by measuring our galaxy's cluster, you can infer the depth of the gravitational potential, right? No, actually not. That's not the full story. And this is because the depth of the gravitational potential is not the only ingredient which governs the clustering of galaxies. There is one key other ingredient, which is how gravity acts on matter. So, in general relativity, there is one key principle that we call the weak equivalence principle, which tells us that all matter falls in the same way in a gravitational potential, independently on their nature and composition. So, this principle has been tested with great precision on Earth, and what has been found is that all known matter obeys it. However, there is in our universe an unknown form of matter that we call the dark matter. Ok, so another dark and mysterious component, in addition to the dark energy? Yes, we have very strong evidence that dark matter exists, since it is visible through its gravitational impact on ordinary matter. We know that there is a large amount of dark matter in galaxies and their clusters, but we have never seen dark matter directly and its nature is still unknown. So lacking of any better knowledge, cosmologists usually assume that dark matter also obeys the weak equivalence principle. It falls into potentials the same way as ordinary matter. But this is a very strong assumption and if we really want to test general relativity, then we need to relax this assumption on the dark matter component. I see. So, since there is no evidence that dark matter feels gravity in the same way as matter, normal matter does, we cannot really assume this. Exactly. And in our study, Camina, Stasi and I have shown that this is a very restrictive assumption and that if we drop it, then we are not any more able to measure the depth of the gravitational potential. And this is because changing the depth of the potential and changing the way in which matter falls inside the potential have exactly the same impact on the formation of galaxies and galaxy clusters. So, should we give up on testing gravity then? Luckily not, because the three of us showed that by measuring the distortion of time, we can actually save the situation. So if you remember, general relativity tells us that if we put a massive object in the universe, we distort space-time. So it means that not only the spatial geometry of the universe, but also the passing of time is distorted by the presence of a massive object. But can we measure this time distortion? Yes, amazingly, we were able to design a new method to measure the distortion of time with the galaxy survey that are planned for the coming years. 
and the three of us showed that with this new method we will be able to differentiate between a theory of gravity which changes the depth of the gravitational potential and a theory of gravity which changes the way dark matter falls in a gravitational potential. So this means that we will be able to test gravity in a truly model independent way without having to assume anything about the unknown dark matter. I look forward to that day. So this concludes our first video about tests of gravity. More will come about the research that I do with my group at the University of Geneva. So subscribe to the channel Cosmic Blue Shift to be kept informed. Yeah.